everybody, welcome back to another edition of the Cheapo Multimeter Review. Yes, today in the hot seat, the all new, and this puppy is all new, the NGTY T1. For your cheap home pleasure. T1 ship via AliExpress for a whopping. Are you ready for this? About 12 bucks Canadian, around $10 US. It's definitely in the cheapo round. Hope you guys are liking those vents of the week. Got another one coming Two, up in this. The piece de resistance, the pocket smart multimeter. They're calling it a pocket smart multimeter. Now, you know what, Lord, I ain't kidding you. When I say, when I first saw this multimeter catalog listed, I just about, I just about wet my pants. This thing looked huge. Yeah, look at that. I'm talking freaking huge. So when it came in the post, I was like, oh my God, this thing is going to be massive on the bench. Well, suffice to say, it couldn't be farther from the truth. No, this is a small multimeter pocket, pocket. It says pocket. Yeah, this is nothing big. Why do they do that? Why do they lie to our eyes? Okay, uh, enough of the beef. Here we go. What do you get in the box? Well, of course, you get your standard little test leads here. Uh, we'll take a closer look at those in a second. They come in a little plastic bag. Not bad. Pretty decent looking box, actually. Nice orange colors going on. Tells us that we have a backlight, illumination, NCV, and all these other little goodies with this tiny little multimeter. And finally, we actually get a manual. A manual. Use manual. All in English. Um... Major faux pas right in the front says 6,000 counts. That's right, it's not 6,000 counts, it's a 4,000 count multimeter. Ah, proofread. The leads are rated at CAT to uh, 1,000 volts. Um, they are not silicon, no, your standard PVC. Fairly long though, a little bit longer perhaps than standard test leads. And they have a pretty decent little shroud here at the end. So Just hanging around now, are we? Yeah, you can see that's a pretty good fit here. Nice and firm and snug. It's not going to go anywhere. Good stuff. Now, be forewarned, no current is supported on this, not even milliamps. It's strictly a voltage meter. In fact, it tells you exactly what we get with this. Up to 600 volts DC, 600 AC and resistance. Continuity, that's it. That's all. So very, very uh, slim pickings here. And it also has NCV. We'll try that out shortly as well. But uh, yeah... Pretty slim pickings. Quality-wise, you know, it doesn't have any rubber boot per se, so it's all plastic exposed. Um, you know, it's I don't know, can it take the bangs? Probably not, not too well. But it is it is solid, it's very light, and uh, certainly pocketable, so uh, yeah, should suffice. Not a lot to the multimeter in terms of functionality, starting off with our one-touch hold and NCV, as well as we have a backlight, flashlight, and finally the on-off. Hold down for about two seconds to turn it on. Finally, you'll see a little illuminated, well, non-illuminated at the moment, LED, that is for the continuity and NCV. At the very bottom, you'll see our two inputs, positive and negative, Cat3, 600 volt or so it says, no current. Also, we have that flashlight on the end as well. Always kind of a bonus when you get a flashlight. And speaking of bonus, how could I forget the bonus? Look at that, we get a little carrying strap to carry our little T1 around. So cute. Once again, in terms of size, you can tell this is one very small meter. The little anning here is probably the smallest meter I've got at the moment. Uh, and that VC11 from Voltcraft, that's really small to begin with. But uh, NGT, why? Just perhaps a little bit bigger, but it is a darn small meter. Now, if we throw in a UT890 Pro, yeah, look at that. Look at that. It's just like freaking huge. <sighs> Take note that positive input is color coded with that red. So uh, at least it could give a newbie a chance not to fry themselves. At the top as well, look at that. It says NCV, that little peak of power. Wow. Now, sometimes when we see those little caps, it means there's actually a filament, an NCV filament that is jetting or jettisoning out of that PCB. Is that the case with this one? Do we really have NCV or is this just all smoke and mirrors? Soon find out. And let's turn the meter on for the first time. Hold down for about two seconds. Bada boom, bada bing, bada bang. There we are. And it is an auto mode. As you can see, it can negotiate its way around the different settings. And with there we are. 5.01 volts is what it's giving us. 5.00 is what we want to see um, in auto mode once again. And we do not have a manual mode with this meter. There is no switching to manual. It is strictly a smart slash auto meter. That's it, that's all. Next up, we'll take a look at diodes. Not, that's right, doesn't do diode either. Oh, geesh. Okay, sitting at one mega ohm right now. Remember, 4,000 counts. 
uh, it goes up to 40 mega ohms. Here we go, let's take it up to nine mega ohm. And not bad, pretty fast. Eight mega ohm, seven mega ohm rather. Let's try two mega ohm. Two, so it's a little fussy here. It doesn't like me switching ranges while we're just sitting in the auto mode. Three mega ohm, okay, four mega ohm. Five, it's definitely fast. Six, there we go. Seven, eight, and finally nine mega ohm. All right, so not too shabby. Um, definitely faster than a lot of other smart ranging meters. Here's a 0.5 ohm 100 watt resistor. Any, any luck here? Any luck here? No, doesn't like it. Doesn't like it. Let's try a 100 ohm lab resistor. And coming up is 99 ohms, pretty close. Oh, there we are. Oh, beauty. And let's just see if we have any resistance on those leads. Nothing at all, good stuff. Finally, let's try an 8.250 ohm. And yeah, 11. Not liking the low resistance values. In the spec sheet, it is telling us a zero to 40 mega ohm a resolution of one ohm. But uh, yeah, take that with a grain of salt. Finally, let's try AC volts and stick it in there. Remember, this is also true RMS, so we should be getting a very good. In there we are, 119. That was pretty fast. 119 volts. Uh, it doesn't do frequency at all, so uh, just basic AC volts, but uh, spot on. Display also is actually very crisp. Uh, you can see at the top right we have that um, little icon telling us it is an auto shutdown mode. It will shut down in about 10 minutes automatically. And if we invoke that backlight, just one little press. The nice thing is when you do that, you're not turning on the flashlight, which is unlike so many other cheapo smart multimeters. So that's a good thing. Nice backlight actually. A tiny little bit of bleeding on the left, but overall very, very crisp. Nice font, really nice display, I gotta say. Very sweet. Now since I have Mr. Plug Handy Dandy, let's try NCV, shall we? So we gotta hold down on that NCV button right here, and now you have to keep it depressed. Oh, wow. Oh, my, 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 my. Very, very good. Now, you do see that LED. It's also blinking, but the way that it is, it's too bad that LED is not at the top because, um, yeah, it's really hidden by your hands. Uh, but, wow, that's good NCV. Hmm. Let's try our standard switch at... Oh, look at that. Light switch. That is, that is very, very good. And we're getting those bars as well, so as you move away, those bars, look at that. Look at that, and as we get closer. Oh yeah, so this has got some super sweet NCV going on here. Beauty. I also have a backlight with this meter, and I'll tell you, it's pretty darn bright. Um, let's try NCV at the mains. Oh yeah, yeah, there's just obviously no issues here. No, no. This is definitely a uh, probably one of the best NCV performers I have seen this year. Good stuff. Welcome back to another edition of Multimeter. Well, you knew what was coming. Multimeters with lousy input protection. Okay, okay. I'm not talking about fortified fluke style arc negating, transient suppressing, fall protection. No, sir. I'm talking about protection from basic cat 2 voltage slash mains home style transients. So, where the hell is it? Instead, we're given chip glass fuses that won't stop arcing, poorly designed circuitry that does next to nothing, and properly rated fuses that, let's face it, are a complete joke. <laughs> Lack of mobs, PTC combinations that completely undermine basic fallback protection. And my personal favorite, no protection at all! Holy s***! <laughs> Suffice to say, the world of input protection is in dire straits. And don't get me started on poorly designed diode clamps or non-existent spark apps. No, it's a dirty shame and a complete shamble that with all this ramble, we still continue to see poorly designed multimeters that offer minimum standards of input protection with complete disregard for human safety. Why? Why? We're not going to go there. Uh, once again, most smart meters, that really has to kick in. And there's a huge delay for that continuity to... Um, to grab so that's ah, too bad but what can you do hey what can you do that being said though um you know so far i gotta say all in all 
for a very basic meter, it seems to be performing quite well. Hey, how does it look on the inside? Let's take a look. Already, it's teardown time with the T1. Starting off with the reverse sight. Yeah, no shielding, but hey, well, no surprise. There are the little two um, battery clips that make contact here with the PCB and feed us that three volts. Slim pickings indeed. Yeah, not even a relay on this one. Everything is handled on board by the main IC. Starting off with the input jacks, we have two split variety. They're soldered in there okay, so nice big solder blobs. Nothing fancy schmancy, but it'll definitely do. Moving in a little closer, we see a programmable header, and there is our fab date, the T1 2021, May 22nd. It's new. Unfortunately, though, we don't have any sort of input protection that's worth mentioning. No PTCs or mobs. Ah. God, animal skin, it doesn't do current, so we're definitely gonna have no fuses going on either. In the middle, like you said, we have our main IC, which is cobbed, but looky, looky there. There is our grandiose NCV, nice filament protruding. So indeed, that little plastic housing is serving a purpose. It's extending that antenna outwards, giving us a better NCV, and boy, does that ever work well. Probably the best NCV I've seen of any multimeter this year. Beside it, we've got our buzzer. Kind of an odd little place to have it, but you know what? It seems to work here, so why not? And there is the flashlight LED as well. Other side of the PCB, wow, it's pretty clean, isn't it? Nothing going on at all. Here are the uh, circuit headers for the zebra strip over here. That is what feeds the display, but yeah, not much else. Some soft touch buttons. Uh, nothing. Nothing else going on. I thought maybe they were going to surprise us, put in a little sneak PTC or something for input protection, but no. No can do. So that's it. That's all, folks. Yeah, pretty basic. Um, once again, it's a basic multimeter. Okay, gonna put it all back together. Come back with my closing thoughts. Closing thoughts on the NJTY T1. I like it. I like it a lot. Faster range. And this thing is tiny. You can put it in your pocket and not even think yeah, twice. It's too bad it doesn't do capacitance or diet or even a proper continuity. But at the end of the day, you know what? That's not what it's all about. It's strictly pocket smart multimeter, basic functionality, but it works and it works really well. Don't be shy. Don't let the NGTY T1 walk on by. Hey, this is a great little one to add to your multimeter collection. No, it's a pretty basic pocket smart multimeter. It doesn't want to do a lot, but a few things that it does, resistance, volts, and NCV, it does really well. The pocket smart multimeter from NGTY gets a solid 3.5 out of five stars. Hey, thanks for watching this smart multimeter review, everybody. To the next one, keep on testing.